Hey, hey, wake up. Hey, hello. My name is Peter. Today, we have a video sponsored by Squarespace and a, I don't know if it's a new technology, but it's a new type of sketchbook, at least one I have never had before that I'm excited to try, to check out, as I often say. Here it is. You ready for this? All right, this journal, it is the onion skin journal. And the, the model, they have a few different ones. This is their original Ouroboros. As you can see, it has that classic Ouroboros, Ouroboros logo of the snake eating its own tail. I'm not sure what the significance is of that in this case, in this particular thing. I don't really know anything about this except that the person who makes these I think their name is Remy Road. Sent me a message on Instagram asking me if I wanted to try out this sketchbook. And um, as soon as I saw that it was a little bit different, you know, something I'd never tried before, I was like, yeah, actually, I, I do want to try that out. Nice uh, logo there on the front. First impressions, it seems really nice. Like, it's just so crisp and clean and square, like all these lines, like there's no bowing or anything, right? You know what I mean? I don't know if I'll keep putting it back in the bag, but at least I have a cool bag for uh, other things now. Drawstring bag. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. It's a little thing here, it says, timeless quality, Made in America, Smithsone linen cover, hand folded pages, onion skin paper, an elusive paper prized by calligraphers, writers, and poets. Onion skin paper has a mystique surrounding it for this last century. And there's their uh, Instagram and website, which of course I'll put in the description. Uh, I mean, even I love so far, I just got to say I love the attention to detail because even this little uh, bookmark size piece of paper has a really cool uh, texture to it. You see there, like all the even the writing on it is really nice. Now, this is really interesting because obviously, like it says in the little the little bookmark insert there. These are um, kind of translucent pieces of paper, like you can even see my fingers through them. And usually, uh, I'm discouraged by paper that is too thin in my sketchbooks, right? But here, there's no getting around it. And I think the idea is to embrace it. So that's what we're going to have to do. Now consider this. Maybe you have a, a hobby a side hustle or a secret society that you're starting, which is really cool. Maybe take that and then slap a .com, a .org, or, or a .net on that. Start it up, go to Squarespace, look at all the cool, cool templates they have, easy to set up and customize, and it'll make it look amazing and so accessible for everyone in the world to find out more about what you're into. Plus, you can uh, set up some e-commerce very easily if you want to sell some things to people with very quick and automated order fulfillment. You don't got to worry about a bunch of paperwork. It handles all that for you. And you can even set up some cool secret members-only password-protected areas if you want to. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website or domain. All right, so I gotta admit, I was very intimidated by this sketchbook. Of course, I was excited, and I wanted to draw something cool in it, but of, of course, there's something extremely different about this sketchbook right off the bat, in that 
Um, the drawings are not as insular as they usually are in a sketchbook, right? Usually, if I don't like a drawing, I can turn the page and kind of forget about it until I turn the page back again. Each drawing is kind of its own little thing on its own little page, living in its own little world, even though it's they're all in the same sketchbook. But here, in this book, they all kind of exist. They, they, they coexist, right? Each drawing affects the the one or two or three drawings nearest it because all the, the pieces of paper are see-through. And as much stress as there can be in a normal sketchbook, you know, and there is that stress for putting a drawing uh, in, in a, because you're putting a drawing in a sketchbook that, you know, you're not like, as opposed to a, a loose sheet of paper you can throw away if you don't like it, that you're making a permanent installation in, in some bigger thing that was kind of magnified for me here in this. And I could have gone about this two ways. I could have drawn a piece of paper and then turned the page and drawn something behind it. What I chose to do here is to go three pages in, do a drawing, and then two more times turn the page backwards and do two drawings on top of it. And how it turned out, of course, I didn't really know what to expect, but I think maybe I should have just done two pages instead of three because once I was had two pages turned on top of the first one, it didn't the, the very bottom drawing didn't show as much as I wanted it to and it just started looking kind of muddy. But I think it was still a good thing to do in the spirit of exper ex spirit of experimentation and even while I had that spirit of experimentation, I'm glad I did it. I think I was still a little bit timid. Um, too timid. In my, in my figure drawing class at school, my professor sometimes tries to get people to make the, draw a little bit more boldly sometimes. And he uses this, I guess it's a metaphor, about how sometimes when you are talking, maybe you're making a presentation or something, or talking to people, and you're about to say a word, and you're not sure how to pronounce it, right? Uh, there's two things you can do. You can either mumble the word and hope you get it right and hope people don't hear you either way, right? Or you can just boldly and confidently say the word and it's like a 50-50 chance. Either you boldly and confidently say it correct or boldly and confidently say it wrong. In the, in the loud and proud method, as he calls it, you know, there's at least one outcome where you look good. But if you mumble it, you, you're going to look bad every time. You're either going to mumble it wrong or you're going to mumble it right, which also looks bad. And so I think that's why he says, you know, loud and proud, just make some confident marks. Just do something, do anything, take a chance, draw some lines and, you know, don't, don't do it so timidly. And I think I was not exactly loud and proud in this drawing because I had all this stuff in my head about what, what it was going on with this weird new type of paper, right? I was thinking about what the, how the next piece of paper I was going to turn over and put on top of this drawing would layer, and I think I should have just kind of let go a little bit. But there's always the next drawing, and you can't do the next drawing until you do this drawing, so it's going to be okay. Also, as soon as I... Um, actually, no, it was a couple days later where I wondered why in the world was I getting so um, so excited about this onion skin sketchbook. And I thought, isn't this just the same as tracing paper? Is, is this maybe a different fancy name for tracing paper? Like I've used tracing paper before. What's the big deal? And I did do some very cursory research. And by that, I mean, I typed things into Wikipedia and there are separate Wikipedia pages for onion skin paper and tracing paper and even like vellum, because you can get very thin vellum, which uh, is pretty much the same as tracing paper. And apparently onion skin paper and tracing paper are very different things. I think tracing, and Wikipedia confirmed something that was in the back of my head, which is this onion skin paper does 
it's a little bit more sturdy. Like apparently tracing paper is a very, no, I mean, excuse me, onion skin paper is a very popular tool for making like um, kites and paper airplanes because it's a little bit firmer. The, it folds very crisp. It makes nice crisp folds, but it's still very light, for example. Uh, and at least in my experience with tracing paper, that stuff is very, very flimsy. And this onion skin paper was a wonderful, wonderful balance of thin and see-through, but also somehow still substantial. Like I didn't feel like it was about to rip in my fingers or crink it didn't crinkle at all somehow. Like tracing paper is just the flimsiest stuff ever. Like it almost just starts crinkling while it's lying there on the table by itself. Um, so I don't know this, I really am happy with this sketchbook. If you couldn't tell by when I was unboxing, it's very cool. I think uh, one of the main things that makes this sketchbook cool is just, all, like I mentioned, the, the presentation, the care, that went into it, just how crisp and clean it is. I like that. Uh, of course, that piled on to make me worry about what I was drawing in it more. But it went okay. Yeah, I did a I did a drawing a, a black drawing on the bottom, three layers. Bottom layer black drawing, second layer in the middle. The meat of the sandwich was a red drawing, and then on the top, the top slice of bread, I did a a pencil drawing and. The, the black drawing, like I said, did turn out to be just kind of a cloud. A, it looked a little cloudy through two pieces of paper, uh, of the of the onion skin paper, which I maybe I should have experimented a little before before I started, but I don't know how I would have experimented. Well, I guess I, well, I'm going to stop making excuses for myself and just say that's what happened. And moving forward, I'll keep making things happen. That's all I can promise. I can't, I can't promise how they'll turn out, but I will keep drawing. Okay. I think that's mostly what any of our goals should be. Even if you're not into drawing, whatever you're doing, let's just keep making things happen. Okay. Also, you might notice, I, I don't know if I should bring this up or up or not, because you may or may not have noticed it. And if it's um, better, you, maybe that's why you didn't notice it, but I, edited this one slightly different. Usually I have several hours of footage and I include every single, I try to include every single pen stroke, right? And I speed it up. It ends up being sped up like seven, eight, ten times speed, which some I've received some feedback saying it's maybe not relaxing. It's, it comes across as a little bit frantic, right? The speed of my hand moving around and stuff. So this time I tried a slightly different editing style where it's only sped up to two times speed, right? So it's only double the speed of my actual drawing, but to make this a reasonable video length still, um, I had to cut out some chunks, but I think it's still a popular way of editing drawings. So we'll see how it goes. Um, actually, depending on how long this commentary, this little voiceover is, it might be slightly less than two times speed. We'll see. Yeah. Anyways, let me know how you're doing. Let me know if you've ever tried drawing on onion, sk onion skin paper. Before this, my only interaction with onion skin paper was um, like Bibles because like really nice Bibles and other maybe religious texts uh, were sometimes printed in onion skin paper. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's because it's so thin um, and those p books have so many pages or something. Or maybe it's just to make the book seem nicer or more rare? I, I don't know what the answer there is because I don't know. Anyways, um, but yeah, I'm really excited to draw on this some more. And now that I've got this drawing out of the way, I have very mixed feelings about it. Maybe I'll look back on it later and like it more. Right now I have mixed feelings. Uh, now that I've got this one out of the way, I'm happy to move on, hopefully, with some of these worries and apprehensions in the past. And sometimes that's how art works for better or for worse, hopefully for better now. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Hope you're hanging in there. You all look amazing. You're, you look really adorable and cute today. Um, so good work there. I even, I can tell a couple of you haven't showered recently, but that's okay. Your natural musk is not that bad. So, um, take care and I'll see you in the next video. All right. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.